hit me, man. I'll shoot a thousand takedowns from minute one all the way to round four, round five, baby. I can go all damn day. The same way Khabib can go all damn day. You know what I mean? When he, uh, Khabib fought Gaethje, people are saying like Gaethje could win. I'm like, no, this guy, he's a born killer. He's been wrestling bears when he's eight. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some bears. their lifestyle is, is, I don't think anyone can like compare to them because of the way that they wrestle and their upbringing and things. You call yourself the black Khabib. Where did you? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for him to say it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, where did that come about? You know what, man? It was sometimes, man. I don't even mean to show a lot of my wrestling in my fights. It's just, it's just there, man. It's just easy. It's just they give me the legs, man. And you know, I what am I gonna do? Not take it? Of course, I'm taking them <laughs> down. So my last fight, I gotta count up the stats on it too, man. I, I want to say we got definitely. I want to say over maybe over 10 takedowns in that fight, maybe around 10 takedowns. Come on, man. At that point, you got to call me the Black Khabib. Now, for nothing, you see guys wrestle out there and they get one takedown. You know, they hold the guy down and all of a sudden, right? It's harder to get that next takedown. And that one after that, they start gassing out a little bit. They start getting a little tired, right? Me, man, I'll shoot a thousand takedowns from minute one all the way to round four, or round five, baby. I can go all damn day. The same way Khabib can go all damn day. You know what I mean? So, the way that guy can wrestle for 25 minutes straight, I know I can. And so that's why you got to call me the Black Khabib, baby. Come on. <laughs> so um, I've been seeing that uh, you've been training with Al Jermaine Sterling. Um, yeah. What is it like to train with him? Oh, I mean, come on, man. It, honestly, just training with our whole team as, as a whole, man, it's, it's a dream come true in a sense, man. You know, just being able to train alongside of Aljo and be with him on his journey because – I remember when I first joined the gym, he wasn't even in the UFC yet. You know, he was uh, coming off a shoulder injury, um, shoulder surgery, matter of fact, and he just had to take a fight, win that fight, and then make it to the UFC, right? And now to see where he is, he's won the Bantamweight Championship. What do you think of Al Jermaine's last fight um, against Peter Yan, that disqualification? That was really hectic. Yeah. Oh, man. You know what it is, man? Um, and I, and I want to say, honestly, just this before I kind of get into it. You, a lot of the times, man, these fans and, and a lot of people, they don't see what goes on, right, after the show. They get to watch from the comfort of their own chair and they get to just cry for, they get to scream for more blood or, or, or whatever, man. They don't really get to live the lives and see what we go through on a daily basis, man. So it's one of those things where, I mean, obviously, Aljo didn't knee himself in the head illegally. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? You had that guy, Peter Yan, who did it. And, you know, when you get a, a situation like that, you really got to start looking, man, at who caused the situation. I never understood why Aljo was catching any flack for it because at the end of the day, it's two things with Peter Yan. It's one of two things. Either Peter Yan is that much of a malicious, and I don't want to curse, but he's that much of a malicious scumbag that he's willing to meet somebody in the head illegally or he's that damn stupid he doesn't know the own rules of the promotion he's a champion of you yeah know what i'm saying so at the end of the day it's either you're an asshole or you're an idiot which one are you peter <laughs> <laughs> like it was aljo's fault that that knee happened right and then on top of that man you got people saying he's faking you got, dude i was with aljo that night you know what I'm saying? The guy was was throwing up because he had a concussion. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, these are the things people don't get to see, though, that, you know, being, you know, and I don't even want to say fortunately, it's unfortunately because at this point, we're not even talking about fighting. We're not talking about team. Like, that's my friend, man. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? So at that point, I'm we're not even thinking about the fame. I just see my brother who got hurt illegally, and now he's throwing up and he's got a concussion. And you have all these stupid fans who just don't know anything. They just see something on their phone and they want to run with a narrative. So yeah, nothing to do with Aljo, man. It's all on Jan. And, you know, I get it. He's a great fighter. But at the end of the day, this was all his fault. He's either an idiot or an asshole. He's got to have to pick. <laughs> yeah, you can't blame Aljo because he has to look at his own safety and he's going to fight again, obviously. So... 
he had yeah. to make a call. I think I think any one of the fans would have made the same decision right there. Catch full episodes of Into the Muse on Spotify, Anchor FM, and Apple Podcasts. Into the Muse on Spotify, Anchor FM. Thank you.